There is an unwritten French law that on sunny days such as these, to stay inside would be criminal. When it's warm and the sun shines on Paris, one is obligated to while away the hours picnicking. You would have to be a very dark soul to resist the siren call of a patch of grass in its innumerable parks, a green bench shaded by leafy branches overhead, a square of cloth staking your spot by the sun. All this for a mere song. It's Saturday again, and at the market, I only have one very important treasure to find. The second largest flea market in Paris is Vendre. I wouldn't know a genuine antique if it walked up and introduced itself, but I was curious to see what the French collected and bargained for. I imagined what one-of-a-kind quirky items I would find here to decorate my dream Paris apartment. I'm notoriously bad at bargaining. I once tried to haggle at a market in Florence. The Italian vendor shook his head and demonstrated that my starting offer was too high as to be offensive. In this flea market are the expected glassware, furniture, chairs, clothes, and my favorite, old books. But there are also haphazard piles of corsets, discomforting ragged looking dolls with glassy eyes, Leather suitcases of yore, black and white postcards, old clocks, and sharp menacing tools. For what uses, I do not know. Men would call out something about the woman with a chapeau. The only word I recognized and the only one that got my attention. You're very beautiful, another one said in his halting English. I love you. <laughs> the geography changes, but the men do not.
Set next to university, Parc Montsouris is large and very pretty, peopled mostly by college students. The park is infused with their youth, vivacity, and laughter. Lots of green lawn to picnic on, a large man-made lake in the middle. There's something in the air. I'm feeling lazy and restless at the same time. I walked and walked, looking to find the perfect patch of grass in the sun until I finally found the right spot, by the rose garden. It is the prettiest viewpoint in the whole park. I finished my book while stacking some more on cheese and apples. There are sweet young lovers nearby, laughing and kissing on the grass in between vivid rose bushes. I wonder if this is their special place, where they meet every Saturday. The couple seems both senseless of the rest of the world parading past, yet somehow an intrinsic part of this gorgeous day, belonging to the park like the trees, the lake, and the flowers.
Afterwards, I fully intended to go home and stay in, go deep into another book. But somehow I persuaded myself to stay outside. The allure of this day is irresistible. So I offloaded some of my things and set off for Canal San Martin, promising myself to leave if it was too much. Indeed, it was crowded, full of people. I stopped at the boulangerie and got my once a week baguette and pan au chocolat. Then some cheese, tomatoes, and olives at another store. And then strolled down the canal, watching the boats and the locks. The sun was still shining when I found a sunny spot to have my dinner.
Today was a full day, but leisurely as well. Lots of strolling, lots of food, lots of people watching, lots of reading. I'm so glad I didn't stay in.